want to tell you a little bit about house parties and what it was like back in them those days. This this house right back of me here, uh, that's where Robert Nighthawk have played at in the, for house parties. And this is the type of house and some worse that I have played here in Mississippi, right here on the same farm. And uh, this is the place where people used to go on Saturday nights because they didn't have any other place to go. Because if they went to town, they could only stay in town until 9 o'clock and then they come back out here until 12 at the, at the most. They come back out here and then they go to the house party, what they call jokes or dance. <laughs> house parties where people would come out of town in like 9 and 10 o'clock like that and they come to the house party. Many of them wouldn't go to town on Saturday night because they have more pleasure coming to a house party like this house here in the back of me here. You see, in that way they wouldn't be worried about getting arrested or getting put in jail or whatnot. They just come in and have their fun until all night sometime until daylight the next morning. And then maybe on a Sunday they'd be there for all day Sunday, and Sunday night until time come for them to go in and they go, so they could go to work Monday morning. Oh, some sometimes it'd be sixty or seventy people be there, and sometimes it'd be less. You know, sometimes maybe be old fifteen or twenty. You know what I mean? But that's the you know people like to go to them house party back then. Cause I used to play for Richard Doodler. I used to play for Atla Kang, live here on this place. See, you know, I played a little bit. Willie Jackson run a little thing one time, a little bit, and I played a little bit there. And so you know that's the way it go. Well, see, the way it is, we used to be here in Mississippi, was all the way bootlegging. There wasn't no license and anything like that you could get for selling whiskey around here on these farms and selling homebrew or beer or whatever you had. You had, you know what I mean, they mostly made the whiskey bootleg and made the homebrew, what they call homemade beer, and they'd sell that, and, you know, to make the money. They'd run the dice game in the back, and... Uh, that's how they cut off on the dice game. That's how they'd make a living. They'd like this house party is what we used to play here. Well, I played at a house party recently in Pine Bluff uh, for a fellow at Robert Love's house. And uh, he, they, back then, they played to make a little money off of whiskey and a little home brew. Well, he played, he, he gave the, he have a little, little wine and a uh, little beer, stuff like that, and make a little money on it. Whenever anybody come along, they want any. He'd buy wine for a dollar and five cents a pint, and he'd sell it for two dollars. And he, he'd buy beer like seventy-five cents or fifty cents a can, and then he'd sell it for a dollar. Whiskey, a dollar thirty-five cents a half pint, and he'd sell it for three dollars. So, and that's how you make him a little money. Yeah, bootleg. Right now. 
Modern time does these done late things. These late years, it wasn't done old time things. Because he used to do a lot of two step back when I was playing here on the same farm. Do a lot of two step jitter bug and stuff like that. But they don't do that nowadays. Not in house party like in Arkansas.
One of them fellas that was sitting there outside of me in the chair, his name was Son. Well, he'd been knowing me for a long time. And he just liked my music. And he always, whenever he can, if I'm around, he can get there, he always come around and listen to me play because he remember the times back. So even when I used to play, he's come around me while I play, he'd be playing at Howard Father. And so wherever I be now, he'd always show up because he likes that type of music. And many others were there, like Jenna, he liked that type of music. from the store. Yeah, that was up this road here. A fellow called Richard Doodler, he was had a place there. And um, I and James Trump was playing there. And there's another Jack was down the same road to my right here. And they was having a dance. And so he, he the boy come on up there where I was because there wasn't nobody at his place. And they had a fight there that night. And guy got shot. And, and girl got shot. OK. And, there's another boy called Black Robert. He was sitting sitting down side of me on the floor because I didn't drink whiskey. And, and you know, he sat down there, you know, because he played guitar. And when people give me whiskey, I'd give it to him. And they got to fighting and shooting. And this boy jumped up from down side of me. And I don't know where he went. No, none of us never saw him no more from that day until this one. None of us never saw him again. And used to be a fellow that I've called Edgar. He had a big pistol in his pocket. He went and closed the door and said, if anybody come in, he was going to shoot. And that had me hemmed up. And I'd walk on crutches and had me hemmed up. And I couldn't get nowhere. <laughs> so I'd stay inside the house and keep getting shot. Because like, when I dozed, I knew I was going to get shot. So I stayed in the house. Well, all right, man. 
to places, you know, like clubs and stuff like that, but they like to get to a private place to see where they just, you know, kind of let the hair down, so to speak. They had a good time, you know what I mean? And they're still talking about it. I want to know when that's going to happen again. I don't know if I can tell them. Back those days, not playing with Robin Nighthawk to give you a good illustration of what it was like. You go to a place and play, and they didn't have much money as they do now, but they fix your supper for you, your dinner, and they fix your place to sleep and eat and stuff like that, and you know, give you a nice time while you were there. And you come back home, you rent, you pay your rent because it wasn't amount to much, and you could eat off of that little money, and. Things was good back then. 
You know what I mean? People didn't enjoy it. Things was good back then, but it's still better now. Things was good. A lot of times you had to be careful about the places you worked. But still, they mostly always treat the musician nice. and never bother him, you know, the musician. But now, a lot of times, if it get too rough, you'd have to get your stuff and get out. See. A lot of times, police would come in and raid the places, and they never put the musician in jail. They just tell them to take the stuff down, go back where they came from, you see. We just take down and leave. But other than, other than that, we didn't have no trouble. Parties and giants and stuff like that because they'd had a bootleg whiskey, and then they hadn't went up and talked to the police or the law, or whatever you might call them, about doing these things. A lot of people just go out and do it on their own, you know, consent. But you had to get consent from police or whoever you was, you know, living on his farm or whatnot. A lot of them didn't do that, and they get raided. See? Then you just have to take your stuff down and leave. But other than that, it was a lot of fun. Didn't make no lot of money, and didn't make no big living, but it was a lot of fun. But nowadays, it's not far the fun, it's for the money and for the living.
part of it is, it's okay, but I don't like how I'm part of it. Too much for God, not enough money, and then also, he wants to fight so much when you play for how I'm part of it. the cities and the music went to the cities, such as Chicago, New York, California, and different places like that. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, New Jersey. Well, there's not much, nothing going on now on the farm. Most of the houses are gone, the people are gone. I'm a Delta blues musician. I play the blues the way it is. See, my type of blues that I play is, uh, it tells a story about what we are doing right now finding out about these uh, places to play, like this house right there in front of me, and other places here, private homes that I played, and the things that people went through back in those days. Well, the songs of the blues is made concerning uh, people that what they went through with back those days. They told the story of how they lived, what they, you know, what they could expect to live by, everything. It tells it all. expressing yourself. It says something to you. Make you think back or make you think forward. See? It don't just only, you know, have to be sad or it don't necessarily have to be make you happy. So when at the age of 10, I had polio and I had to go to the hospital to stay Two years and seven months, when I came out, I couldn't use my hands good. So I had to learn all over again. So I learned to play then with the strings upside down with a case knife. Well, I'm gonna find me a bald man. Wake from sun to sun. I asked for a cool drink of water. You wouldn't give me none, big boy. You 
Next thing I'll call, I know who y'all had heard of that. Everybody said, this is quiet. I said, you ever heard of Baltimore? Everybody said quiet. I know you heard it before, you see. Can't fool me. <laughs> anyway, I'm glad y'all like it. You know what I mean? I'm just trying to bring back a little few memories in the blue and let you know how I got started. That's all. And so we're here today and talk about it and hope you enjoy it while we're here and here to do some filming. And I hope very much that you all get a chance to see it on television you know, when the time is right. Well, what we are doing is, uh, is trying to let the younger generation know just what happened. You hear Elvis Presley, you know about him. Don't you? Any of you know about Elvis Presley? You heard it. You know about him. Don't you? Okay. Well, how do you think he got famous off the songs he written? He didn't write them. He recorded black people's songs to get famous. So did the Rolling Stones. So did the Beatles. So do many other. You see, but now many people like you all say, y'all hear rock music, you say, oh my goodness, that's, that's real good. You never thought once where it came from. Came from the blues. Jazz came from the blues. Yeah. All of it came from blues. Now, just like I play this type of music here, some person, maybe some of you in this room right now, as you grow older, maybe you think about how I played or some other guy played, well, you'll faint you out a little further and make a little different sound, see? And then you bring it out and give it a new name. But after all, where it came from. See, that's the way it goes. <laughs>
hear you. Well, now, a, a, a particular song of that kind, that wouldn't be made for just, uh, what I mean, say, playing in a club or something like that. That was strictly made for vendors, you know what I mean, and uh, record players. Just like if, uh, see, a lot of people drinks a lot, and you have to remember that, you know what I mean, when you're a musician. You have to try to find something to fit their mood, see. A lot of time, they, maybe the wife done left them, uh, maybe the best girl done cut out, you know what I mean? Well, they could listen to something like that, you know, that makes them feel a little better. They'd reach over and get another little drink then, you know. <laughs> you got to feel better, see. Well, that's, that's what you have to take into consideration. Okay, now I'm going to play a faster one. Now, this is the uh, type of music here, what you would dance around with. <laughs> Mississippi, Louisiana, Tennessee, Missouri, Illinois, Iowa, Michigan, New York City. So, uh, and them places I played in a lot of places, all through different little towns, cities, out in the country, rural areas. Oh. Did you just write about it? Huh? Did you just write about it? Yeah. No, not, not necessarily. See, uh, you don't just write out all songs about yourself. You write songs about other people and about other different objects, uh, human beings and whatnot. You, know, you don't just write a song alone about yourself. You see, that would be telling a story about yourself. You write that down all right now, but not in a song. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll let you play my guitar. If you anybody out there play guitar, come forward and play. <laughs> Come on, Beverly. Come on, Beverly. Uh, I knew it was somebody out there that could play a guitar. See? <laughs> now, I don't say you play it my key, but now you, you just tune it the way you like it. You tune it the way you want. <laughs> oh, well, oh, well, I thought you. <laughs> You try that right. See, any time a man, any time a person. Well, I'll just do this one. I don't have but a few minutes anyway. Oh my goodness, see, I, I ain't got nobody to help me on that one. Yeah. I don't have anybody to see. You know, it came up to see. 
Why you don't play rock? Uh, you make more money. Well, I, that's just the same as a person singing spirits. You wouldn't go up there and ask them and say, why are you singing spirits? That's just their feel. Blues is my feel. If you play rock, rock is your feel. Play country and western, that's just your feel. That's what it is. Everybody have their own choice. I want to tell you a little bit about house parties and what it was like back in them those days. This this house right back of me here, uh, that's where Robert Nighthawk have played at and for house parties. And this is the type of house and some worse that I have played here in Mississippi, right here on the same farm. And uh, this is the place where people used to go on Saturday nights because they didn't have any other place to go. Because uh, if they went to town, they'd only stay in town until 9 o'clock, and then they come back out here uh, until 12 at the, at the most. they come back out here, and then they go to the house party, what they call jips or uh, dance. <laughs> House parties, well, people would come out of town in like 9 and 10 o'clock like that, and they'd come to the house party. Many of them wouldn't go to town on Saturday night because they'd have more pleasure coming to a house party like this house here in the back of me here. You see, in that way, they wouldn't be worried about getting arrested or getting put in jail or whatnot. They'd just come in and have their fun until all night sometime, until daylight the next morning. And then maybe on a Sunday, they'd be there for all day Sunday, and Sunday night until time come for them to go in and they go, so they could go to work Monday morning. Oh, some, sometimes it'd be 60 or 70 people be there, and sometimes it'd be less. You know, sometimes maybe it'd be old 15 or 20, you know what I mean? But, that's the, you know, people like to go to them house parties back then. Because I used to play for Richard Doodler. I used to play for Atla Kang, live here on this play. So, you know, I played a little bit. Willie Jackson run a little thing one time, a little bit, and I played a little bit there. And so, you know, that's the way it goes. Well, see, the way it is, we used to be here in Mississippi, it was all the way bootlegging. There wasn't no license and anything like that you could get for. 
As far as it is over there, it may actually affect Freddy's pud.